Mary Esther, Florida. Are you thinking about moving here, relocating, whatever, and just curious about what this area is? Well, you are in the right place. We are going to go over the pros and the cons of moving and living in Mary Esther. So just to give you a little hint, we're going to be going over some of the pros, which are like the coastal beauty and activities that, that we have here the amenities galore that you're going to find here and a lot about community spirit. Some of the cons that we're going to go over is going to be the summer climate, <laughs> yeah, the temperatures, uh, transportation, and well, the uh, traffic concerns. But if that's what you're after, we've got that and a lot more, so stick around. What's up, everybody? This is Tim Whittemore here with the Whittemore Group here in the beautiful Destin Fort Walton Beach area. That's right, including Mary Esther. If this is your first time to our channel, we do tons and tons of videos about everything you need to know about our channel. So go ahead and hit subscribe and click that little bell so that you're notified every single time we got a new video coming out. So if you are moving here, need some help, got some questions, please reach out to me and my team here. Give us a call text email heck shoot us that little paper airplane <laughs> whatever you got to do we got your back when moving here to the destin fort walton beach area to include mary esther okay so let's talk about mary esther if you haven't really looked into it yet where is it located most of the people that are moving here are usually interested in the Destin area or maybe some association to the military, military contractors, and looking around the area of where to go to. And a lot of the, those times they're going to see these little areas that say Mary Esther <laughs> that are just outside of the greater Fort Walton Beach area. So where is it? Well, it is just to the west of Fort Walton Beach, and it actually extends a little bit around where their Hurlburt Field, which is part of Eglin Air Force Base, but Hurlburt Field is, and it goes a bit out to the west down Highway 98 and up, well, it calls Mary Esther Cutoff. Guess what? It's on that side in Mary Esther Cutoff. Not a huge population in this area, somewhere around five to 6,000 people, and it's nice and quaint, right? So let's get into some of the pros and some of the cons. I'm a big fan of going into the cons first. Let's get them out of the way. So let's go into number one. First is the summer climate. <laughs> as much as you know, coming to Florida is going to get hot. We're in the panhandle. Sometimes, you know, it gets really nice in here. It does get hot. It does get cold. But it can be really, really nice for about four weeks in the spring and in the fall. And then the other times it kind of gets cold and gets hot. But hot is the part we're going to talk about. It, 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 it get, get up to the 80s, 90s degrees. And if you're like, yeah, that's okay. I come from Arizona. You haven't had it with 100% humidity. It hurts. <laughs> there are times I'm, uh, I like to train for triathlons and marathons and things like that because I'm crazy apparently. Uh, but there'll be times in the summer where, I, where I'm trying to pick the coolest time of the day. Early morning, coolest part of the day is 84 degrees oh my goodness 84 degrees and it's got at least 90 plus percent humidity that hurts it really does suck when it comes to the the humidity but that's okay right when it gets cooler you know we start to get into the 70s a bit everything's really great and then all of a sudden it just sometime around december january we get down to the 40s and stick around 46 as our average temperature which again, you're thinking, hey, I'm from, you know, North Dakota or something like that. I'm used to way cooler than that. I'm going to be fine. Well, probably until you get this Florida skin that we all got. Well, there's the problem is when you have that cold and it has that humidity to it, man, it really feels cold. And I'm sure those people out there watching can contest to that. I'll give you an extreme story of it. Prior to this, I was in the uh, Air Force and I used to fly with this, this unit that would go up to uh, Greenland, up to the North Pole, and down to the South Pole uh, to resupply for the National Science Foundation. Big old C-130s with skis on it, whatever. And we would go out to these places. In Antarctica, it was super dry. So like a negative 20, negative 40 didn't feel as bad. I know that sounds crazy, but it didn't feel so bad. But I was like negative, negative 20 was normal. And we went up to a place called Cambridge Bay, which is up there in the Arctic Circle. And I get out and I see the temperature says negative 20. I'm like, oh, that should be fine. Don't really put much on my face. Walk around the aircraft and it's beet red when I get inside. I'm like, oh my goodness, what is going on out here? It can't be that cold. It was humidity. 
the humidity made the biggest difference. So just keep that in mind. Number two is transportation. There's not a lot of public transportation, which means that you're going to be and going to need to have a car to get around. It's not a lot of places that you can walk to unless you're on the eastern side of Mary Esther, but even still, just keep that in mind. The traffic. Ah, traffic. Well, think about this. So we have Mary Esther. It's right there uh, where, where the air base is, right? And you have Highway 98 where it's where a lot of traffic coming in and out trying to get to Destin from Pensacola to Navarre Beach. All that stuff's coming down there. So we really do get a whole lot of congestion going through the Mary Esther area. And it's just two lanes on either side. The time that it's really the worst, and it's year round, is if you are going down there sometime around 2.30 to about 6.30. And the reason is, is that everybody on the base is getting out. And so once you get up to that Hurlburt Field, it's stop and go traffic, especially if you're trying to make it to Navarre. Well, if you live in Mary Esther, it's not that bad. You'll only be in it for a little bit. But if you've got to go all the way out to Navarre, expect to sit around for like an hour plus just trying to get down that way because of the congestion. Don't get me started if there's an accident and they have to close both lanes down, you could be sitting there for hours. So yeah, traffic can really be a factor moving out there. Noise levels, you're by an Air Force base. So there's gonna be helicopter noise, there's gonna be a lot of jet noise, you're gonna hear a lot of that. The good news is, is if you stick around long enough, you really don't notice it. I mean, I was in the Air Force for 14 years, so I got really used to that jet noise and it just doesn't bother me that so much. But if you really wanted that nice, quiet neighborhood, it is quiet most of the time, but you are going to get that. And of course, you'll hear traffic congestion if you're close enough to Highway 90 or yeah, Highway 98. <laughs> All right. Next, uh, number five is going to be those coastal concerns. Just know that some of these places, as you get close into the intercoastal waterway, will be in a flood zone and you'll have to carry flood insurance, which could put that up there, okay? Uh, there are some places that are in Mariester that are not in a flood zone and you should be perfectly fine. Although lately the insurance for this area has not been all that great, so just keep that in the back of your mind. Make sure when you are looking in Mariester that you do ask your real estate professional if you are purchasing a home here, uh, what those costs can be and get some sort of estimate based upon where that home is located. Now, uh, other things to be concerned about is that you do have the hurricane risk, but you're going to have that anywhere in the places that we described. The only place that uh, doesn't get hurt so bad is when you start to go north of uh, Niceville into Crestview in that area. Last but not least is the tourism impact. We kind of talked about that already. The big thing in Mary Esther is the traffic on 98. That's what's really going to back you up. If there's a traffic accident, people are crazy, you know, driving around, you know, they're not used to how we drive and they're coming in and just bounce it all over the place. Um, Highway 98 can be very dangerous. Uh, you do have tourists. They've had a little bit more than they should have to drink and got behind the wheel. We see a lot of that stuff kind of happening down this way. So just keep that in the back of your mind when you decide to go there. A good way to mitigate that is if you are going to go to Mary Esther, stay on the eastern side where you can get into Fort Walton, where you have access to everything and you're not subject to 98 and whatever else is going on on that highway. Okay, so let's get into the pros. It's positive time. All right, positive time. Let's go. First and foremost is you got that coastal beauty and activity. Yes, you are on the intercoastal waterway when you are in Mary Esther or pretty darn close to it. So you have the, what we'll call Okaloosa Island, that's this peninsula that goes all the way down to Navarre Beach and down to Pensacola Beach and kind of sits there. But there's this area where there's a bunch, it's the back part of the water. We call it the intercoastal waterway that goes into the bay. And Chaka, Chakahatchee, Choctaw Bay, that's how we pronounce it. So, uh, <laughs> or at least us that aren't, didn't actually grow up here. So uh, when you're on there, you have access to this. So if you got a boat, you want to get into it, maybe you don't have a house on the water. There are some communities that have their own docks and their own boat launch and things like that that you'd be able to get to. But there's plenty of public uh, boat launches as well in order to get your boat into the intercoastal waterway. It's a lot better to get in there, especially if you've 
like me just like to be on a pontoon and just tool around that's what i like to do so you have access to do that and there are some places to go out swimming either way in mary Esther, you're just a short way away from okaloosa island part of fort walton beach or navarre beach uh, to be able to get out into the gulf uh, if you want to go swimming or do some things like that there's tons and tons of activities for you to be able to do maybe not exactly in mary Esther, but very very close now there are amenities throughout this area this is number two uh, and i'm going to call this just proximity to stuff <laughs> right mary Esther is really good for that so you've got lots of dining options off of mary Esther cut off and all throughout the fort walton beach area again you're close to navarre navarre has exploded with a lot of different amenities in their shopping centers and things like that are closer to the mary Esther side so you don't have to drive that far to get to Publix. There's a new Mexican restaurant. I haven't tried it yet. It's the time of this video. I'll let you know. Uh, but there's a, there's a bunch of different mini malls and stuff. So the infrastructure is getting built out a lot more as more people have been moving in here, which has been really nice. Uh, also, you will have uh, the Santa Rosa Mall. It's, well, this day and age is kind of dying out, but we still got a lot of stuff around there. <laughs> All right, number three is Community Spirit. I love throwing this in here in any place that we say our pros and cons because we're right here in a military community just like myself uh, i got out of the military and just decided to stay here i actually moved back here but it's not, neither here nor there but uh, there's a lot of people that are still active duty that are retired uh, that, that just kind of bring that sort of um, respect around, the, around that culture not only that but we're really close to alabama and and uh just part of this uh, southern hospitality that you're going to experience while you're out here and plus it's florida so you got florida isms that are in there so that that combination is pretty awesome and because of that you're going to get a lot of uh, good community spirit uh, throughout there people that look after each other not a lot of crime those sort of things number four the quality of life uh, it's it's really good quality of life while you're out here uh, mary esther actually has really good affordability, which is the next thing I'm going to talk about for housing is one of the best in the area. Uh, there's not a lot going on necessarily. So crime is really low. It's really laid back, relaxed, and it's just a beautiful place to be. Number five is affordability. Told you I was coming back to it. <laughs> uh, when you do go there, there are diverse options of different places that you can go to. Uh, when you're in Mary Esther, you want a condo, you want one of those condos that are sitting on the water. Right. Uh, <laughs> you want a single family home, you want a gated community, all that exists, surprisingly, exists in, in the Mary Esther area. It's very diverse for sure. If you want to know what the range is here, this video now, which was filmed towards the end of 2023, uh, the single family home median price was 338750 Went pretty specific for you. The high was up to $4.1 million. Yep, that's a beautiful house sitting on the intercoastal waterway. And the low of 155000 which was a trailer, and it was kind of trashed. So just to give you an idea of, of what the affordability is for housing out this way, and the affordability for rents is going to be pretty similar to what you're going to find in the Fort Walton Beach area. Okay, and last but not least, you have education and services throughout here. You do have some good public schools that people will go to. You'll be able to go to Fort Walton Beach High. You've got um, the different elementary schools throughout here. You've got a lot of private schools as well if you want to get into uh, those, those specific spots that you can uh, get, get the kiddos to. I would really highly suggest there's a lot to name here, but go to niche.com and, and look up what's, what's actually out there and what their ratings are. But I caution you with those ratings. I caution you with those ratings. I would look into the actual comments that people have left because sometimes those ratings will be like, hey, it's a B minus, but people love bringing their kids there and had a great experience. So make sure that you take a look at those. And of course, you're good, especially if you're a military vet trying to get to uh, healthcare facilities and things like that. You've got the Fort Walton Beach Hospital. You've got a lot of urgent cares that are within each, uh, like a really short distance. And of course, if you have access to Holbert Field, you do have access to that uh, medical care is there. And if you are a veteran like me, you're not too far away. It's about, depending upon where in Mary Esther, could be 15, 20 minute drive to the VA clinic. So there's a lot of stuff around this area uh, for you to enjoy. 
But that's all I got for your pros and cons of living in Mary Esther, Florida. If you got any questions about anything I mentioned here, please leave it in the comments below. I love hearing from you guys. All right, please leave it in the comments below. And if you are moving here, you got some questions or you just need our help, please give us a call, text, email, find me on social media. Myself and my team here, we're gonna help you out and make sure you had the best possible experience in purchasing your next piece of real estate. <laughs> but again, my name's Tim Whittemore with the Whittemore Group here with LPT Realty. We'll see you in our next video.